Okay, guys, we are on the last question for this paper. Very exciting. Okay, 4.2. Let's get stuck in. Tourism creates many employment opportunities in the United Kingdom. Tourists are most frequent, are most likely business visitors, holiday visitors, or visitors to friends and relatives. VFR. Sounds very official. Table three below shows information regarding the number of visitors and the reason for their visits. It also shows the number of employment opportunities for the different tourist regions. So these are all the regions. This is the number of um, visitors split by holiday what's this called? Visitors to friends and family, friends and relatives, and business, and then direct employment, right? So it's basically the employment opportunities in these different regions, right? So you can see there's quite a lot. Okay, so let's now look at the questions, because again, remember I told you, the questions help frame the scenario, and it helps us understand the scenario in the way that the marker and the setter of the paper wants us to. Okay, so it says, use the information above to answer the questions that follow. Calculate the difference between the number of visitors to north to the northwest and the number to West Midlands. So this northwest is not the, the northwest in South Africa. It's the northwest in England, okay? So let's look for northwest. It's always good to have highlighters here because sometimes it can get a little bit tricky. So there's, um, sorry, there's northwest and then we have, West Midlands, okay? It's important here also that this is in thousands, right? This is not just these numbers here. Oh, I've got highlights on my finger. Um, but it's in thousands, okay? So let's do this. Okay, so we're going to say the number of Northwest is this many minus this many, okay? And remember this answer is in thousands, okay? So put that into your calculator, Okay, um, and we see that that is 3114.4, okay? So importantly here, you can say 3.144, um, right? Or what you can do is you can actually put times it by 1,000 to get the answer, okay? So you can either write 1,000 like this, or you can just times it by 1,000 in your calculator and write it out like this. Oh, don't do that right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you can do it either way. Both would be correct. Both would you, get, you would get your marks. It's just showing you different ways of representing it. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So it's just, it says, determine as a percentage, important. They're telling us wh what um, they want the form of the answer to look like. The probability of randomly selecting a business visitor to the Midlands from the total business vi business video business visitors. Sure, that was difficult. Okay, so remember probability is saying, what do we want, right? In this case, we want the Midlands. So this is both of these Midlands, right? That's important. We want the Midlands visitor, right? Business visitor over the total business. So it's saying, if we just looked at the business, total business, right? And we said, okay, what's the probability of picking from one of these two fields over here? Well, what it would be is it would be the, the number of business visitors to um, West Midlands plus the number of business visitors to East Midlands over the total number of visitors that are business related, right? So it's saying, we're looking at business people. This is our total sample. What is the probability, right, of getting a specific set within that? Well, you say, okay, this is the specific set I want over the total set that I can get. And that is why you write it like that, okay? Let's put that into our calculator. Again, just make sure that you're typing this incorrectly. It is very, very easy to mess it up. So, but it's set to a percentage, right? So, we must remember to always answer the question that is given. So times it by 100, okay? Because that's how we get a percentage. And it's always important to give our answer in the form that they've asked. So I'm getting 12.66% when I round off to two decimal places, just so that you can see there, okay? So that is our answer there. Um, and that is that question done, okay? Perfect. Let's now go to the next question. A visitor stated that there are more than three times more holiday visitors than, um, than business visitors to Scotland. Verify with calculations whether the statement is valid. Okay, so we're looking at Scotland. Let's just highlight that specific row so we know where we're working. 
Okay, so it says three times more holiday visitors than business visitors. So let's say the number of holiday visitors over the business visitors. Okay, so the holiday visitors is 1157. Okay, and the number of business visitors is 378.3. Okay, let's see if that's three times more by plugging that into our calculator and seeing how many more times people go for holiday as opposed to business. So we see that, five, eight, okay? We see that it is over three times, right? The number of visitors on holiday is over three times more than the number of businesses and um, the number of visitors for business. So we say, yes, they are correct, okay? Important, important, important. I know I say this a million times. You have to say whether the statement is correct or not. Don't just say, don't just do the calculation and leave it at that, right? Actually go and answer the question and say, yes, they're correct or they're incorrect. Let's move on to 4.2.4. It says, calculate the interquartile range for the VFR visitors. So VFR is this column here. Okay, remember when we're doing the interquartile range, our most important thing is to put um, the numbers in order from smallest to biggest in order to do that. So let me see if I can put this both in, in the frame so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the smallest over here, if I run my finger down here, is 175.1. I hope you agree with me. Um, let's just see, let's tick it off as we go. That's the smallest. Let's see if there's a two. No, then the, oh, goodness, sorry. Then the next smallest is this one. The next smallest is this one, then this one. Okay, so I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. Sometimes it is very tricky to always see what's going on. So I'm seeing this five here, 562.7. Then I'm seeing six. 608 or 600.8 then I'm seeing 700 so 762.6 then I'm seeing this 800 and this 800 so let's put those in 806.8 and 856.2 then I'm seeing this 1000 and then I'm seeing the last number is 3,000. So I hope you guys followed that. I'm literally going from smallest to biggest. Okay. Let's just count. We have all of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. So now we have 11, right? 11 of these different numbers. So let's find the middle number first. So the middle number of 11 is going to be six, right? Because if I go one, two, three, four, five, six is the middle, one, two, three, four, five, well, one, two, three, four, five. So six is the middle, right? So this here, 608 is what we call the median, okay? And remember, right, that our interquartile range is going to be, right, Q1, I mean, so Q3 minus Q1. Now, and remember the median is called Q2, okay? So Q3 is the median, right? Listen to what I'm saying here. The median of the numbers above the actual median. So it's the middle of these five, one, two, three, four, five, which is this, right? So Q3 is 856, 856, oh, sorry, 856.2. Okay, Q1 is the median of the numbers that are below the actual median, right? So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be Q1, which is 405.7. Okay, so it's very important to put them in order, find the median, then find the median of the numbers above the actual median and the median of the numbers actually below the median. Okay, so then this is what we get, right? Because now I'm just saying, what is Q3 minus Q1? 856.2 minus 405.7. So my interquartile range is 450.5 thousand, right? Remember, you must do that or you can write it 
like this. Whichever you prefer, right? Whichever you prefer, they're exactly the same, but you must make sure that you're indicating that thousand. Okay, so that is the interquartile range. Very important question. Okay, let's now move on to 4.2.5. It says, give one reason. Give one other reason besides employment opportunities why tourism is important to your country. Okay, well, there's lots of reasons, right? It helps tourists navigate, so it, it, it can help um, tourists navigate, um, navigate like, um, what do you call this, main attractions. So it like makes them make the most of their time. It creates employment for people who are there, right? Tourism industry is massive. So it creates um, employment for people in the UK. It brings in money to the economy. There's lots of stuff, right? But you only have to give one reason. Go look at the memo if you want a complete list, right? But there's lots of reasons. Just think quite practically here. But they're wanting you to basically bring in the practicalities of the situation. Okay. So let's now look at the last questions, fantastic, of this paper, 4.2.6. The mean direct employment in the UK is this much. So it's basically saying, I just want to link these two so that you see what I'm saying. This amount here is actually this amount that's sitting over there. It's the total employment, right? So it's basically all of those guys added together equal this guy, okay? And then it says the Northeast employs 30440 fewer what does fewer mean? Less, less, right? People than Wales. Calculate, oh, sorry, there's a bug. <sighs> calculate the direct employment for the Northeast. Okay, so if we can calculate that for Wales, then we can calculate it for the Northeast. Okay, so let's, what we're going to do is I'm just going to say, let's add all of these up. Let's just call this the Northeast, right? We're just going to call that the Northeast. And because it says the Northeast employs this many less, Fewer people than Wales. We'll just say here for Wales, we'll say Northeast plus the amount, right, that Northeast is has fewer than Wales because Wales is then just going to have more by that much, right? Add all of those together, make it equal to this, and then solve for the Northeast. Okay, so it's important to be able to translate numbers, I mean words, into numbers. Okay, so let's, let me show you what we're doing there. So we're going to say 471928. Oh, there's like a massive bug here. Please don't eat me. Okay. Then let's keep going. So I'm just writing this all out. You should be writing this with me just so that you can follow what I'm doing. Okay. Let's keep writing. Okay. Remember, it's also important, right, to show your marker what you're doing. Okay, so don't just assume that your marker knows what's going on. Be very explicit about what you're doing. Okay, and you see that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to, sorry, I'm trying to not be attacked by a bug fundamentally, but I'm also trying to show you that this is the best way, the best way to be showing your marker what you're doing, right? And this equals 162666. Um, comma sorry seems to be a comma in here oh, okay they, they're saying that in, i'm gonna say five four is that right comma five four five five okay cool so let us now solve right for this um northeast okay so let's then add all of these together so we're going to add all of that side together, except for the northeast. So these two northeasts that we have here, let me make sure you can see what I'm seeing. These two northeasts, we're just going to add together, right? So those two are just going to literally be like this. So 10, two northeasts, and then we're going to add all the other numbers together, and then we're going to make it equal to this. Okay, so let's add all those other numbers together. 471, 928, plus... 170113 plus make sure that you are putting this correctly into your calculator. Very easy to make a mistake. Um, very, very easy to make a mistake, but you just don't want to lose marks for making silly mistakes like that. If you want to, if you, I mean, not that we want to lose marks, but if you do have a choice of losing marks, rather lose marks on big questions and not questions where you just have to type things in. 
Okay, let me just check. I um, I hope I typed all of that in correctly. Okay, so I'm going to say one six seven three nine four two four. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do, okay, is we are going to um. Oh. Oh, guys, look, very interesting. We actually, I have not read this correctly, right? It says the mean direct employment in the UK, right? So this is not actually that. This here is actually this times 11, sorry, this times 11 equals, equals that. Because this is the mean, this is the average. So it's saying we've added all of these together and divided by 11, right, because there's 11 fields there, and we've got that. So that's very important. So actually, what we need to say over here, over here, is we need to say that divided by 11, right, because we're saying everything that's added across here, if we divide by 11, equals this average. Okay, so very, very um, important, right, to understand the question. So the mean direct employment in the UK this is the mean, the average, right? So basically, all of those added together, divided by 11, gives me this, okay? So I've added all of those together, divided by 11, and gives me this. I've still done exactly what I did before. Add all of those things together, put it there, have the 2 northeast, divided by 11, equals the average. Remember with the northeast, right? We said, okay, we're just making the northeast e equal to the northeast, Wales is northeast plus the 30,440 because of what was said in the words. Important, important to translate words into maths. Now, we have to get the northeast by itself, okay? So, I have to do a bit of algebra here. So, to get rid of something that is divided on this side, we're going to multiply this side by 11, but we're also going to multiply that side by 11, okay? So, this is what we're going to get over here, okay, because that 11 is going to cancel with that 11, which is fine, that's what we want, we want it to leave, right, we want to get it away from the northeast so that we can get the north e the northeast by itself, okay, so this is 17893320.001, okay, so we're doing well, we're doing well there, I'm just going to go like this so that you can see, Okay. Now we want to get rid of this guy. So because he's added on this side, we're going to subtract him from this side. And we're going to subtract him from this side. Okay. So let's do that. We're going to subtract 167-3924. Okay. Then we have two northeasts equals 115408.005. Okay. Now we just need to get rid of this 2. So because 2 is multiplied on that side, we're going to divide it by 2 there, divide it by 2 there, right? So divide that by 2. Then we just get the northeast, because that 2 is cancelled with that 2, becomes this, 0, 0, 0, 2, 5. So you can just say equivalent to 57704. Oh, okay, so... It's a little bit of a complicated question, right? But it says here, calculate the direct employment for the Northeast. Well, this is the direct employment for the Northeast, right? What we did is we said, if you add all of those together, you divide them by 11, it gives me this. Then all we had to do was simplify. So we did that. We added the Northeast together, right? Then we added all the other numbers together. We put it all over 11 because it's an average. We made it equal to the average, and then we solved for the northeast, and we got this amount. Okay. If that's not clear, guys, I understand that that's a difficult question. Please go over it again, right? It's very important to understand that we're working with the mean, right? And we're using the mean to work back to what actually the total number of direct employment was in the northeast. Okay. Very good question, this. hope that was helpful. Cheers, guys.